Interesting, Florida teacher gets arrested for playing music, blasting music inside of the school. I got mixed feelings about this one. Let me say that up front, let's put up a picture of the teacher. The guy actually had a solid point, okay? I know he got arrested and he should not play loud music during testing. He did, but there's a reason. So he's a Florida middle school teacher. He was blasting music while students took a standardized test. All right, that is disruptive. His name is Martin Reese. You're looking at Mr. Reese. He's an art teacher in Florida who felt he had to stand up for kids and protest the standardized testing taking place in his classroom. So let me say this before I continue with the story, okay? I am anti standardized test. That's where I'm at. I think standardized testing is a monopoly, it is a multi billion dollar industry, and it has been utilized in discriminatory fashion for decades. Big money in standardized testing. And typically, it does not actually solve any problems. It doesn't really say how well a student who works hard, how well they would do. I know this, I've been a professor for years. So, Martin felt that it was his duty to do this. Um, he also added that the stress of the pandemic made the forced testing inappropriate. He had a solid point there. The teacher who was hired just three weeks ago, <laughs> he was only hired three weeks ago, all right? Says he was disgusted at the student situation. He claims it's unfair to make students sit in a classroom after two years of grappling with COVID-19 pandemic to take a test that would be retired after this spring. Solid point, uh, the test is no more after the spring, okay? That test or testing period is typically connected to funding for an institution. And if you can show increase in performance, you get more money from your state and federal government. It also qualifies your school for increased grant funding from private organizations. Now we should kind of work the other way. Uh, where if you have an academic problem, you should then qualify for more money. But if you show that you have academic challenges, you then receive less money for your institution. All right, uh, the scene was live streamed on Martin's Instagram page before police arrived and escorted him out of his classroom. The school briefly went into lockdown during the disturbance. Uh, I think that was overkill. I think they overreacted uh, with that. Uh, Reese states that the reason he blasted the music is so the entire school will have to retake the FSA. And he talks about his beliefs within the school system, as well as speaking up for poor students and how the teaching staff is underrepresented by the black community. Once again, he's making solid, solid points, okay? Martin expressed that I quote, the whole world changed on them. And now we put all this pressure on them to take a test. I'm gonna get into the arrest in a minute. Now, I wanna remind you that we are starving in K through 12 education for real teachers who are student advocates. We're starving for that, okay? So you, you got a guy who's doing something that's definitely a student advocacy model. He's doing it to advocate for the students. Now, is he doing it in a way that disturbs the status quo? Of course he is, it is a protest. If Protest makes you comfortable, it is not a protest. It is meant to make you uncomfortable. There's more, so let's talk about the arrest. Reese was charged with disrupting a school function and disorderly conduct. He since bonded out of jail and was dismissed from his position at Creekside Middle School. The Department of Education claims the state assessments play an important role in educational equity which ignores the proven negative consequences of high stakes testing that disproportionately impacts minority and low income communities, all right? Once again, the brother had a solid point. Negative consequences include the loss of valuable opportunities to learn due to testing preparation, the narrowing of curriculum to focus on testing standards, and the stigmatization, the stigmatization of students and schools as failing or in need of intervention based on faulty interpretations of what test scores actually mean. And I want to explain this because there are a lot of people that will say on the post, well, 
You know, there are such things as bad schools. Well, schools are typically a reflection of the social economic environment around them. Schools typically are unable to address all of the social economic variables that may lead to decreased performance when it comes to standardized testing. We need a holistic approach, which takes full integration of community, government and school system. Standardized testing favors students from high income families. We know that based on data in a 2015 analysis from inside higher ed found that in each of the three parts of the SAT, the lowest average scores were among students from families who make less than $20,000 in family income while the highest averages were among students from families who make more than $200,000. Let's put up his picture again. The brother had it right, okay? He had it right. Now he went to jail. There are some things that are worth going to jail for. And because of his passion about this, his advocacy, fine, he gets a charge. I hope his charges get dismissed. But even more so than that, I hope this sparks a true dialogue about the ills of standardized testing in the United States of America and the industry it promotes. All right, Ms. Dahl, thoughts here. Yeah, I think one of his defenses could be First Amendment. You know, it is true mm. that your First Amendment rights are limited in a school, but I would definitely argue that for him if I was him. And yeah, maybe he has a life in advocacy. He might have a hard time getting another job since, as you said, he was only there three weeks before this. But he really is highlighting a good point. There's so many things that we could fix in our education system. One thing that California does, they passed a law a few years ago, and instead of your zip code money going to the school that your zip code is based, the money is distributed based on need. So a wealthy community is not sending all their property tax money to that school. So there's things like that. I think standardized testing was trying to address a problem of not allowing kids to fall behind. But like you said, it's not really working. So there's other creative things that could be done because we don't want students to be failed by whatever school that they're in. Yeah, and there's another study that coincides with the sentiment of this educator that shows when there's a school system with standardized testing, then they take a lot of time away from actual curriculum in order to prepare for those tests. So you're teaching kids to pass a test rather than teaching them to pass the game of life. You're teaching kids to pass a test rather than learn the actual curriculum that's in front of them. And you use a memory aspect, you basically get them to memorize short term to dump all of that information into a test and they've learned absolutely nothing. They did not digest anything because we're teaching a memory model rather than a learning model. So I concur with the sentiment of this educator, I'm actually okay. Uh, with the fact that he was willing to go to jail. I think that means you stand up for something uh, and you're willing to accept the consequences. And I hope to hear more from him because this is what you call educational leadership. Uh, It is rare that we see a school teacher willing to take this kind of stand. So on that, I applaud you, sir, uh, because we need more school teachers who are willing to be bold advocates for those they teach. And one thing about him, those students will never forget that school teacher stood up for him. Stood up for them. They will never forget what he did. All right. So big ups to you for doing that.